Okay. I feel like maybe there should be some epic music to this one. Um, this is Slope Blur. Under Adjustments, you can find Slope Blur. And Slope Blur is probably going to be one of the most uh, powerful new tools that you're going to find in the 1.3.1. This is a node that I, s I selected for very specific uh, needs and uh, was super excited when I got it. And uh, let me give you a little example of what you can do with it. Wait, what? What was that? Okay, before we get into the experimental stuff, let's take a look at what it is sort of uh, initially sort of designed for. If we go ahead and take our just basic Perlin, you know, basic boring Perlin, we go ahead and we do a soil on it and I'm not going to bother doing graded. We'll just do that and we'll add a sat maps to it. You get a little bit of texture, but you know, yeah, there it is. Well, if we take the soil and we do a slope blur on it, default settings, you see it's pushed it down the terrain and it's shoving it in the direction of the height map. And it's doing it iterative time. So it's doing multiple times. What that basically means is that it's going to go ahead and it's going to sample information at a position and it's going to sample the uh, pixels around it and it's going to say which direction should I push this sort of like a motion blur and it's going to push it in the direction of that flow and then it's going to reevaluate it and it's going to say okay now where do I do it okay it's going to go this way a little bit and we're at now where okay down here and then down here and down here and it's going to continue to push it multiple times the result being, of course, this super cool um, appearance of almost like flow. Now it isn't flow because if we looked at how uh, flow looks, let me just close my annotation tool here. Um, we take our slope blur and instead look at a flow that I've got down here. You can see that the direction is the same, but it's definitely not the same information. And that slope blur can be used in creative ways. So, for example, I've got this, and then maybe I'll just subtract it from the train. And now I've got something that's, you know, carving in those grooves and it's um, enhancing the recesses. This is, again, going to be different from something like, say, an ambient occlusion or, you know, what soil does by default. If we go ahead and take another look here, we've got a soil. And we're going to do a slope blur on that. And again, you can see how it pours down the surface. It gives that lovely illusion. We're going to take a sat map on the soil, which gives us this and so so. And then we take a, another similar sat map and we'll play with it until we get some similar colors, but different. And then we combine those together. It's definitely been enriched. We can go ahead and take ourselves a flow here and I've created another uh, sat map. So I refine that. It's based on the other sat map here. I just refined it. And now we get to that. So now regular boring Perlin becomes interesting rocky outcrops Perlin. So it's a really powerful tool for assisting you with texturing your surfaces uh, to help you uh, just get yet another kind of piece of visual information to enhance the, the process of texturing. Now, uh, let's take a look at what it does in a um, sort of regular breakdown. So what I've got here is I've just got a simple Voronoi, a nice little chunky Voronoi. I'm just going to set it to set this to G so that it shows you on a flat surface, but still in three dimensions. And uh, we'll see our chunky little Voronoi texture. And over here, I've got ourselves a little height map information. So the height map information, if we just press T on that. Come on, T, you can see it's just that so bring that back and when we add a basic slope blur to that i've just lowered the intensity you can see that it is just blurring it out 
Now I've done a low intensity in multiple iterations here to show you something else that's sort of happening. And um, each time it's just repeating the function. So it's pushing it a motion blur based on that, that pixel, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And uh, it's doing it multiple times. Now with a low quality, that's what we're getting. If I push the quality up, we get more iterations um, in between the, uh, the iterations. So more slices uh, in there and it maintains the quality a little bit better. So setting a higher quality will maintain the intensity, the value over time. If we push the intensity, of course, we get more intense per, per initial slice. And we can see that pushes it. Now we also have a direction for this. So if we play with the direction, you can see a sort of spinning effect. So uh, it's altering, it's not only just going down, it's also going around, which can give you other ideas of how you can utilize this particular tool to your desires. Now, of course, if we go symmetry, spare. So you get additional movement across there. So it plays with the height map and it does a, uh, a really decent job at uh, giving you some, you know, um, movement across that surface for any kind of textural detail. Now, of course, we can also normalize this and uh, we get a more um, subtle effect so we're still getting that spin. You can see the spin going in there. You can see the, the pattern that's there, but it's not pushing everything super aggressively. Uh, additionally, we also have anti-aliasing, which is actually quite nice. Um, if you find that you're doing something with terrain in terms of slope blurring, the terrain as opposed to just the texture, you'll find that the anti-aliasing will come in uh, as a valuable component, but it does take a long time to calculate. So remember what it's doing is it's basically calculating additional four times or 16 times in order to get that uh, upper quality. Um, the high, of course, also will get rid of some artifacts. So in changing the quality in the, in the um, um, value here as well as over here will get rid of some of those smaller details when you're dealing with actual terrain blurring as opposed to just texture blurring. So I highly recommend you come in and play with this. It is super cool. Check it out.